Um, welcome to um, the public feed workshop. Um, I don't know, well, not everybody knows everybody in the room, so I have to give a short explanation about FEET. Um, FEET stands for Future Emerging Art and Technology, and it's a project funded by the European Commission to support artists that interact with um, researchers who, well, do science or develop novel technologies um, in so-called FET projects. FET is a program that the European Commission funds, and it's actually a relatively advanced program in the sense that this is um, not basic research, but it's, it's very innovative type of research uh, that is already goal-oriented, that has a certain orientation towards technology, but they are relatively far from application. Uh, and the idea behind FEET is to put a group of artists together with these researchers um, and basically see what happens. Uh, it's based on previous experiments. We are not the first to do this. Actually, you might even say it's a trend, although some of you may say uh, it's not a trend at all. Uh, we can discuss this. Um, but uh, we're probably the first to do it um, at this scale. Um, and certainly within the FET program of the Commission. So uh, we'll see what comes from it. It's, uh, um, this is also the purpose of this workshop here, uh, to get a better understanding of what's going on. Maybe also, if I'm, I'm really happy if the artists later tell us what is going on in their particular projects. Um, and, uh, but also, of course, what is the underlying idea? What are we trying to achieve this? And when I say we, I mean we as humans. So um, it's a bit more than just us in this room. Um, the title we have chosen for this workshop, and I think it's the first real public workshop. We already had a workshop in Amsterdam, but that was to team uh, the artists with the um, scientists. This is sort of our first public philosophical discussion. Um, and the title we've chosen is Ways of World Making in Art, Science and Technology. And I'll try to make this a bit clearer in the next five minutes or so. Um, before I do that, um, let me just, I think this is one of Anna's, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, this uh, an artwork, actually. It's a robot. Is it a robot? It's a robot. Um, and it asks the question, what if we injected art into future and emerging technology projects? So this is, this is the underlying question. Um, we know already that this is most likely going to lead to interesting um, art. We are not so sure what happens on the side of the science yet. So this is also a little bit our uh, aim in this, in this undertaking to get a better understanding of what's going to happen on the side of the science. What do we expect in this project? We expect um, uh, societal discussions. Um, we expect some new perspectives for the researchers. We hopefully get a little bit uh, raised awareness of a general public. Maybe some enhanced take up of new ideas. Uh, and obviously not all works of art, because the artists are actually contracted to deliver that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the safest outcome. So, uh, and one of the things we promised was focused discourse and high impact collaborative outcomes. So this is what we're going to do tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure about the high impact, but it's certainly going to be collaborative. There will also be a large exhibition towards the end of the project where people can actually uh, go and look um, at the works of art, maybe even touch them, listen to them. I don't know yet. I hope we'll get a bit more about that today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, so today is the workshop on knowledge constructions in art, science, and technology, and tomorrow the emphasis shifts a little bit. Uh, it stays with the construction, but it goes a bit more towards the um, poiesis, uh, techne, and episteme part, so it's really focusing on these processes of creation, be it either technological creation, poetical description, um, creation in the widest sense, or knowledge creation. Um, and I think that could be quite usual. I have given it also a subversive English title, which is towards original unity, or just united in originality, 
Oh, I got to be polite. All right. Let me, let me say a few words about today um, before we start. So, um, the underlying idea is uh, that we are dealing with constructions here. This seems to be the common thing when artists um, produce works of art, when engineers uh, produce works of engineering, and scientists produce theories. Um, that there is a process of creation. Now, we could easily ask, is this just by chance, or is there some underlying principle going on here? Um, and there might be. Um, you can see here, um, that's, um, that's a board. Um, does anybody know whose handwriting this is? Uh, it's a famous physicist who left the blackboard with his writing. Really fine. Yes, it's Richard Feynman. Uh, and what you can see here is what I cannot create, I do not understand. Um, and that left many people puzzling. Um, but of course, it's something that has um, not just been written down by Feynman, there are many others who have said similar things. Since we are in Vienna, I, I chose to take two more quotes from Viennese philosophers. Ludwig Wittgenstein says, uh, that's actually his earlier work, um, we make to ourselves pictures of facts. Uh, the so-called picture theory of uh, truth that's behind this. Usually people focus on the second part here, it's the pictures of facts um, that is then discussed in, in philosophical theories. But I want to point out that uh, even there, there is a, a making part here, it's a creation part here. Um, and then there is a, um, a Viennese philosopher called Lucas Pavlik, who wrote the book Verstehen, Verstehen, Understanding, Understanding, uh, who also says we only understand what we construct. So this is this is the starting point. So there seems to be some kind of intimate relationship between understanding and creation. Uh, and that might be one common theme between the artists and the scientists and maybe also the engineers. Um, I had the pleasure of being invited to a, a discussion with um, physicists recently in, in Saragossa. Uh, and there was a um, uh, an interesting astronomer present who show beautiful pictures of the universe. Um, and we, so he had this enormous telescope and he said, okay, look, I, I take pictures of the night sky and if you would be, I don't know how many parsec, mega parsec away, this is what you would look at. You know, this is what the universe uh, would look like if you were there at this position. But when you look at these pictures which are no doubt beautiful, they have an aesthetic quality, um, you will immediately realize they are actually not pictures, they are constructions. They are constructed in many different ways. First of all, usually they are composed of, of different pictures um, taken from, in this case, I think it's Hubble. Um, they are composed of different frequency uh, spectra that are then transformed into the visible into visible light so that you can actually see it and observe it as a human. Um, and there are other things going on, such as very long time exposures. Uh, so yes, these are pictures, but they are pretty constructed in a sense. So uh, the question arises, in which way are these actual images uh, rather than constructions of reality? So, um, it took me a, a while to convince the astronomer that these are actually not at all pictures, but anyway. Uh, so this is how you create them, for example, in this very uh, example. You compose uh, them from different uh, spectra, including, for example, infrared light, which is then transformed into some physical light, so that you can actually uh, watch it. Um, if you go down to the very small scale, um, you and this is again a physics, a physics example. Um, what people very often do is um, they, they start the um, simulations, simulations of what happens at a very small scale in physics. So this again is a picture, in this case, not even of a real object, it's a picture of a simulation. It's a simulation of what should happen if, uh, well, if you collide certain particles uh, at CERN, such with the end actually of find, uh, finding uh, X bosons. Yeah. So, this is basically a prediction of what would happen in order to find an X boson. And as it turned out, 
it was a correct simulation within some boundaries. Uh, but of course, this is before you actually compare it to the real world. This is all construction. This is all constructed reality. Uh, this is based on very sophisticated mathematics and on computer simulation. But it's it's an image of a construction, basically, that turns out to be, in some sense, in correspondence of what's going on in the real world. I want to show you one more, and you can see there is a certain trajectory towards being a bit more artsy. So this is uh, this is something that um, was uh, uh, very much um, hyped at a certain point in time. Uh, it's a, an example from artificial life, a field of computer science um, that that I think is less fashionable today. But, but when these pictures were created. This was very much uh, um, tiny pictures, and it's a. This is based on simple rules of evolution, um, and then again simulations in a computer of what might happen if simple um, organisms develop and how they develop. And in this case, the aim or the the optimization behind is actually movement. So these little creatures, which are basically made up of blocks. They develop ways to move, so there is some basic physics going on here, and then they survive depending on how efficient or how far or how quick they can move. The interesting thing about this, this little field is that uh, this is inspired by biology, so it takes things that we believe are true in biology puts it in a computer simulation and then creates these pictures. But it's not really about biology in any literal sense. There is no, this is not, many people would say, this is not simulation, this is actually a metaphor. Um, there has been a very bad paper about this field which, which actually calls this sort of thing fact-free science, because there is no, there are no such creatures in the world. They are, they are mere visual metaphors. And the question is really, what is this about? Is this about anything real at all? Or is this just an artistic endeavor? And it created a big argument uh, in artificial life at the time that this was published. It was a very important discussion. I think it, it actually led to many interesting questions asked. Um, let me conclude with one more example. And of course, now this is art. Um, at least judged by the price uh, for this picture. Uh, this is Man Ray's uh, picture, Now Possible, uh, The Impossible. And those of you who have ever played with cog wheels or are engineers will immediately recognize why it's called The Impossible. Um, it's impossible to move for the that it's possible for the, for the cog wheels to move if they are put together like they are here. They block each other. So movement in this picture is not possible. This is, uh, this is a piece of art that asks questions uh, about, I think, the relation between art and technology. Um, interestingly, it's also entitled Danger, um, or Danger, probably. Um, at the time of its production, 1920, uh, Man Ray was still very much with Dada, so uh, you can't be quite sure that it actually refers to anything in the image. Um, but the theme of this picture, some argue, is the proximity and the distance of art and technology. So it poses precisely this question that probably also we would like to have a deeper understanding of. I, I like it because it's it's relatively straightforward. It's, it's a very simple um, construction in a sense, but it's still not easy to really get your head around what's going on here. All right. Um, to conclude, um, I think that what we're dealing with here is actually, um, or apparently, we have, as human beings, we have two very fundamental ways of dealing with the world. We're trying to understand it, and we're trying to control it, and it seems to be somehow deeply rooted in our human nature. When we understand it, very often we deal with language, and we create certain 
things, especially in language, but apparently not just in language. Probably, at least a part of our artistic interaction with the world is also of this nature, so that you might say um, there are linguistic endeavors of helping us around in the world, um, and they might be scientific or religious, and then there might be works of art who probably have a similar aim. Um, and on the other hand, of course, there is this aim to control the world, to save us from the destiny uh, that we seem to be, um, yeah, that, that we seem to be unable to escape from, um, so that we create theories in order to predict nature with the end to eventually control it. I think these are very fundamental um, ways in which humans deal with the world, and it seems to me that these processes of creation underlie a lot of these uh, efforts uh, that we see today, be it in art, be it in science, or be it in technology. But that's just something we can discuss today and tomorrow. I just throw this at you so that we have something to discuss.